All right, hey, Honors Chemistry. I wanted to provide a brief video on how you could calculate the slope given a line. So this was our mass versus volume of gray metal graph, but we're not gonna use the data points. We're gonna use our trend line because we know that that trend line goes through zero. So I'm gonna try and find two points on this trend line with data points that are in my X and Y values and use that to calculate the slope. Now remember, slope, is equal to change in y over change in x. And when and I use the delta sign, delta, delta means change. Delta is a Greek letter, and it means change. And it's usually some final minus initial business. Okay? Now for y and x having a delta, we're gonna say y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We're gonna find two sets of data on this graph and our tool twos are gonna be higher up than our ones. So let me find a point that kind of is easy to see. So it looks like this point is directly on the trend line. It looks like it's at somewhere down here at, let's see, 5.2468. So this looks like it's 5.2 milliliters. Right? I'm finding this on the graph, how to do that. Kind of like how you read your rulers, there were four lines in between five and six. So it would be five, 5.2, 5 5.4, 5 5.6, 5.86. Right, so this is my 5.2. And then if I go over on the Y axis, it looks like it's at 15, 16, 17, 18 grams. Right, and so how'd I do that? There were four lines between 15 and 20, so 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, and if you need help with how to figure out markings in between measurements, let me know that's something a little bit different. Anyway, so I have what I'm gonna consider one coordinate, right? And remember, we write coordinates x, y. A coordinate is an x value comma y value. So my x value, was 5.2 milliliters, and my Y value was my 18 grams. Let's call these X2 and X1, right? Because this is higher up. I'm gonna try and find one that's lower. X2 and Y2, I mean. Let's call that X2 and Y2. Now let's find another point on this graph that looks kind of easy to tell and is directly on the line. I found another one down here. And it looks like it is at the 2.2, 2.4. It looks like it's at 2.6 milliliters, right? And again, there were four lines in between the two and the three. So two, 2.2, 2.4, 2.6, 2.8, three. And then let me go over onto the Y axis where the grams are. And it looks like it's at five, six, seven, eight, nine grams. Okay, and how to do that again between 5 and 10 is four dashes. So to get to 5 to 10, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, all right, and I'm gonna write that coordinate down here again. We write coordinates as x, y. I'm gonna call this x1 and y1. So my x value was 2.6 milliliters, and my y value was 9 grams. Sorry, there's a little typo here. So my XY values, 2.6 milliliters, because on my X axis, if you remember, we plotted y, uh, the milliliters on the X axis, and then on the Y axis, we plotted grams. And so now, I'm going to try and find my slope. My slope, again, is Y2 minus Y1 equals X2 minus X1. Let me plug in my data here. So I'm going to put a box around my X's and a circle around my Y's, just so you could see where they're at, okay? I didn't put the milliliters in here. And so my Y2 minus Y1 are my circles. Y2 for me was 18, and Y1 was nine. So I'm gonna plug that in. 18 grams minus nine grams, that's on my top. Then I'm gonna put my X2 over X1. My X2 I labeled as 5.2, and my X1, I labeled as 2.6. So 5.2 grams minus 2.6 grams. I'm gonna solve top and bottom. 
So 18 minus 9, I mean, we could do that in our heads, but I just want to make sure. 18 minus 9 in my head, 9 grams. And notice how I'm keeping the units here. Units are going to be very important for this slope, because I hope you remember what this slope represents of uh, mass versus volume. So my top number is going to be 9 grams, and my bottom number is going to be 5.2 minus 2.6. That's going to equal... 2.6, oh, this isn't, see, I made a mistake. This is why units are important. This should be milliliters. I wonder if you were watching the video and you were like, what is he writing? So this bottom one should be milliliters, not grams. That's why it's very important to have units. Look at how I got tripped up easily. So my top numbers are in grams. My bottom numbers are in milliliters. I cannot cross out grams and milliliters, so my slope is going to be of the units grams per milliliter. If I solve for this, 9 divided by 2.6, I get 3 point, if I'm using the correct amount of significant figures, this one shows me 1, but I probably rounded. I'm not going to do sig figs for this right now, but I'm just going to use as many sig figs as I want. 3.46 grams per milliliter is my slope. And do you remember what the slope equals for mass versus volume data? I'll give you a second to think about it. If the units are grams per milliliter, this is saying for every 3.46 grams, there is one milliliter of the gray metal. And we call this the density. So the slope equals the density and you could easily use the density to go between grams and milliliters and beneath on another page I actually have the graph with the slope that we plotted before and here is what we plotted as the actual slope 3.4543 does our number match with our calculation yeah it does 3.46 is probably about the 3.4543, but we rounded to an awful amount of significant figures. So you get the same answer doing it by hand and by plotting it in Excel. But on your quiz and some worksheets, I'm going to need you to plot it by hand. Okay? Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any other questions or concerns, please let me know.